on over and over again tonight is the enemy has plans for you. He wants to get inside of your door. He wants to take your joy. He wants to take your happiness. He wants to take your salvation. He wants to take the anointing that God has given you. That is his plan. And so Christ says it, and he continues to go on. And then we get to finally to verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. He said, the enemy comes to steal, kill, kill, and destroy. And so this is what I'm going to do for the rest of the night. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break down every single word that Jesus Christ used. And I'm going to make it simple for you to understand. So you truly understand what the enemy wants to do with your life. The first word is the word steal. The enemy wants to steal. Now when I think of this word steal, the word steal does not mean for me to go and take the camera from Danny and run away with it and, 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 and pawn it for money. That's not what the word means. In the original language, the word steal means to take with treacherous intentions. With treacherous intentions. And meaning when, when, when the enemy comes to steal, he has something in mind. And you see, I think about this word, and I thought about it over the years, and there's a one picture that the Lord gave me um, about this word still. And it all starts with a girl by the name of Carly Brucia. I want to tell you the story of Carly Brucia. Carly Brucia became a national headline about five, six years ago, all over, all over America. She was on CNN, and this is her story. One day, Carly Brucia, she was a beautiful young lady. She had, she had lied. She was about 13 years old. One day, it was about Super Bowl weekend, Carly Brucia decided to go to her friend's house that night. They're having a slumber party. Um, they had fun, probably. They probably played pajama parties or whatever it is that y'all girls do when y'all have y'all summer parties. <coughs> Only y'all know. And so she went there that night. It was a Saturday night. Sunday morning, she woke up. She woke up, and that day seemed just like any other ordinary day. Carly Brucia, she woke up, she probably said hi to her friends, she, she, she went on through her day, she got up, she did her hair, and she headed home. You see, but the thing is, is on her way home, Carly Brucia was intercepted. She was stopped. Somebody stopped her. And he found her at this place right here, which is a car wash, and he took her. And this video, this image was played all over the country for days and days, and about two weeks, you know, it was played. And the nation watching her as they wondered what happened to Carly Brucia, because this was the last time that anybody had seen her. This was the last footage that you will ever see of Carly Brucia alive. Carly Brucia was taken by a man named Joseph Smith. You see, Joseph Smith was a mechanic. He was working and, uh, and he took her. And they, they later on figured out who he was and they found him and they questioned him. And after days and days of interrogation, he finally confessed what happened to Carly Brucia. You see, they found her in the in the woods, dead. This is what he did to her. Joseph Smith took Carly Brucia and he took her to the woods and he had treacherous intentions in mind. He stole her. He stole her from her dad and he stole her from her mom. And he took her to the woods and he raped her and he ravaged her body and he beat her over and over again. You see, it, it's easy to say rape because automatically when you think rape, it's okay, you know, I get an image, okay, something bad. But let me tell you what he really did to her. I don't know how many of you guys are 13 and over, raise your hands. If you're under 13, please raise your hand. Make it easy for me. If you're under 13, how old? 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. Good, good, good. I'm sorry you have to listen to this. You're in a new service, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you what he really did to her because rape is... It's such an easy word to say. We can hear it. We say it. And you're going to miss the point. This is what he really did to her. He took her. He put her in the car. He put a bag over her face. And then he raped her. He raped her from, from her, her he, what we call vaginal rape. He raped her um, from, from her vagina. 
And then after that, or before that, they don't really know, he raped her orally. He raped her orally. He raped her. And then he beat her. He put a bag around her head like she was an animal. We treat animals better than when he treated her. And then he clubbed her and he strangled her. And that was the last that we know of Carly Brucia. You see, what I want to tell you tonight, young people, is Satan has plans for you. He has plans to kill you. He has plans to steal you from your family, from the heart of God, from your ministry, from, from your purpose. Some of you guys have dreams. Some of you guys have purpose. Some of you guys have vision of, of what you want to do. Some of you guys want to go to college. Some of you guys may want, may want to be in ministry, maybe. Some of you want to have a, a, a family. But the word that I have to tell you is Satan has plans. And the first thing that he wants to do to you is he wants to steal. He wants to steal the calling of God over your life. He wants to take, take that thing that is placed inside of you, take it and ravage it and rape it. God, Satan wants to rape the purpose from your life. That is his plan. That is his, his goal. That it is nothing left, only more. And I want to talk a little bit about Joseph Smith because my question is, is how did Joseph Smith get to, to doing what he did? He was, he was, he was convicted, um, brought, brought to the court, um, laid a sentence down, life sentence, they're going to kill him. But how did he get there? You see, the thing that I want to tell you is Satan doesn't work overnight. Satan works as a progression, he works slowly. Slowly, he tries to, to reel you in. He doesn't just go and, and show you sin. He doesn't just go and show a young man sex. He doesn't go and show a young man, a young woman sex. He doesn't show you a, a joint or, or a cigar or anything like that. The way he works is through progression. He wants to take you in slowly, not overnight, but to bring you in one day at a time. You see, it reminds me of a story by the name of John. John was a young man, maybe in high school, um, freshman, sophomore, no, no more than a sophomore. And, um, and John, he, he got in high school and he loved football. He played football and he was a quarterback of the varsity team. He was so good that he was a quarterback of the varsity team. And so, um, and so of course, like most underclassmen, if you guys are in high school, underclassmen, we, when you're underclassmen, you look up to the upperclassmen. You look up to the seniors and the juniors. They're cool. And so, um, John, he's a quarterback, and keep in mind, he's a quarterback of the team. He has to lead them. So he has to gain influence. He has to be able to lead them, um, be able to command, and, and be authority, because they're listening to John, um, such a precious young man. And so John, he, he, he's a quarterback of the team, and he's hanging out with some of the juniors, some of the seniors. And one day, some of the juniors and seniors, about two or three approximately, they invite John to go out. And John, um, he's excited, um, he's a sophomore, he's going to get to hang out with the upperclassmen. He takes this as an opportunity. So John, he goes home and he tells his mom, he tells his sister, he tells his dad, that you know he's going to go out on Friday night, he's going to go watch a movie. And he's excited, he's like, yes, you know I'm going to go watch a, a, a movie. And, um, and finally the night comes, and, um, and, and uh, the upperclassmen come, pick him up in the car, and John, he, um, he leaves. And they go to the movies, and I don't know about you, but have you ever watched a whack movie that just wasn't any good? Raise your hands. Okay, good. Okay, good, good. Put your hands down. And so um, John, he goes to the movies, and the movie that they watched was whack. It was like, it was so lame. It was not a good movie. And so John and his buddies, his buddies start telling, man, John, let's get out of here, bro. This is... This movie's whack, man. Let's go and let's go and hang out. Now this is the thing. John told his mom and his dad that he was going to the movies. If he leaves the movies and he goes somewhere else, now he lied to his mom and his dad because he's not telling them. He wasn't being honest with where he really went. And so John has to make a decision. John has to make a important decision. What does he want to do? Does he want to impress? His friends, because they wouldn't go out. And if they have to take him home, it's going it's to take too long to take him home, and the night will be ruined. So is he going to impress his friends, or is he going to lie to his mom and dad? And so John, 